My dear, dear Pitcam audience, it's a, it's a great day for us. I have a great interview partner. It's Matt from Trivium, and now I'm going to eat a currywurst in Berlin with him. Make sure. Ah, hey. we good. I'm fine. Awesome. Hungry? Oh yeah, as Let's always. Go. So there are two kinds of currywurst, mm -hmm. one with intestine and one without. Which one do we want? Which one's the best? I, I love it. I'm cool with intestines. The, so. uh, residents of Berlin eat it with. I love intestines, so. What's uh, that stuff? This is without intestines. Oh, I see. And that's with. Okay, yeah. that looks better. Yeah. I'm a big fan of organs. And you can see, there's a little food fact, I don't know if you know about this, but that's the blanching process, where the fries are typically pre-fried at a lower temperature, okay. they're left to rest, and then they fry for the final temperature. That's Ooh. how you get the crispiness of frites and whole frites. So I learned something new? Yep. I do that at home. You do it by yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah I cook, cook all the time at home. But I've been really into making frites but lately. But you're not actually... Not an actual chef, no. <laughs> Maybe one day. So, this one is for you. No, no fries for you? No fries for me. Oh, you healthy man? No, I take a slice of bread. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So, Matt, I know you are a big gourmet. Yes. But now you are in Berlin and you have to eat a delicacy of Berlin. It's the Berlin Currywurst. Awesome. And I have some facts for you. Okay. The Currywurst was invented in 1949. Yeah. Uh, by Miss Hertha Heuver. So, just you. It's a good woman. <laughs> yeah, she is, yeah. but her name is... Um, yeah. The sauce you're eating with mm -hmm. uh, was patented in, uh, 10 years later in 1959 mm -hmm. as chillup. I don't know why chillup. It has to be chili, but I think it's curup. Yeah, because every time I've had the sauce, it doesn't seem like spicy like chili. Okay. Is it spicy? Uh, I don't know. This, Mildly? I hope so. Yeah. And 50 years later, uh, the curry museum was opened five minutes from here. Curry museum? Yeah, there is a curry boss museum. How big is it? I don't know, I've never been into it. If it's really big, I'll be impressed. So, next time we are in Berlin, we are going to there. Awesome, sounds good. So, then just yeah. eat it. Awesome, yeah, I'm stoked. Every time I've ever talked to a German friend or whenever we're walking around looking for food, I'm always like, what do you eat late at night after you go drinking? And everyone always says curry first. Everyone, yeah. yeah this no seems doing or stuff? Um, I always ask for what's the more German thing. Uh, obviously, you know, Turkish German kind uh, of like influence thing, but whenever I hear about this, this, is, this seems to be the German go to. Yeah. I've only had it before in Oberhausen, I had mm -hmm. it at the Christmas markets, but what I've been told is this is one of the best ones, so. And it's pretty damn busy, so. Guten Appetit. Guten Appetit, enjoy your food. Oh, yeah. That's really you good. You think it's good? Mm hmm. Really good. Yeah, what do you think? I think it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Where does your affinity uh, for, for food? food come from? The first memory I ever had of wanting to try everything was when I went to school for the first time in elementary school, everyone was talking about what breakfast they had. Like, oh, what would you eat this morning? What would you eat this morning? Because we're talking about like what cereal they had. They asked me, I said, oh, I had rice and salmon. And they're like, oh, that's disgusting. Why would you eat that? I was like, I've always eaten that. That's when I realized at first that I was doing something different than everyone else, so it made me want to learn what every other country's different was, or what what every other country would view as. What the other country's normal is. If my normal is rice and salmon, what was every other country eating for their normal? And so since then, I've eaten pretty much traditional food of almost every single country I've ever been to. Okay, and um, what, what was the best? You've Japan's the best. Yeah? Japan is the best in the world. Um, outside of that, the food I had in Brazil recently was unbelievable. We have a, uh, the national dish called feijoada. It's all different cuts of meat boiled together in a giant pot with vegetables and beans. Okay. So it's just like a black stew of meat. And sometimes there's pig ears in it, pig noses, also really? regular meat. Oh yeah, real good stuff. Um, yeah, I've, fa I've thankfully been able to have a little bit of everything. Ever with turkey. Had some of the greatest food of my life. Bulgaria, some of the best food of my life. I've never had something Mexico, like this. Mexico, I even had Ecuadorian food, so. <laughs> Luckily, because I'm so into food, and nowadays people know about that, they take me to great places, so I appreciate this. And what is your favorite German meal? I guess curry was yet. 
I've had so much traditional in Germany. Um, I actually ate at the only Michelin star restaurant I've ever been to was in Munich. I ate in Germany that had like white truffle foam soup with black truffle shavings on top, so like super fancy stuff. But then also Reisenhaxe, mm -hmm. Reisenhaxe. I've had uh, I've had all sorts of meat-based dishes here, and I really love traditional German food. It's just the potato dumplings. Huh? The potato dumplings. Mm. You know, uh, it's like a circular potato. I forgot the yeah. name of it, but I love that. I, I know what you're talking about. I know the name. Mm. German oh. Jäger schnitzel is amazing. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and the Wiener schnitzel. Oh yeah. Oh, and uh, Bratkartoffeln. Bratkartoffeln. That's yeah. one of my favorite things in the world. Are you doing it by yourself at home? I need to start. Someone. Um, this tour, I've gotten so many cookbooks from fans, and I got finally got a German cookbook, so I'll be making German at home. I'm actually, I'm quarter German as well, so it's. Always good. I read about it. Yeah, always good to be here. But in your home country, you've never been eating German or your from the U.S. Um, I think, you know, honestly, I think all American traditional food is semi-influenced from Germany or from Britain or from France. It, that's kind of like our staples are all descendant of that. And then nowadays, with the new American style cooking, that's that's actually a genre of food. New American takes traditional American things puts a much more modern twist on it. Okay. And typically being very sustainable, local, organic, that kind of thing. So that's one of my favorite styles. That's probably, if I ever open a restaurant, it'd be in that, that vein. You're going to? Eh. And the band's got to get a lot bigger first. I have some money for that, but I would love to. I would love to have a restaurant where I can show people dishes of stuff that I've had around the world. Things like nasi padang out of Indonesia, which is a giant banana leaf with rice, fish, sausage, and... Um, a half a chicken in it with spicy sauce. You eat it with your hands. Okay. So I'd love to be able to have people try that if I were to have a restaurant. Sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. And this. Uh, the last time we met, you told me that you are a massive meat eater. <laughs> What does meat make so important to you? Hmm. Well, I think it's... I don't know, that's, that's a difficult question. It just is part of life. You know, because I, I... I have no problems with people who are on dietary restrictions because of health, like they have to do it or something, or whatever their choice may be, but for me, I feel like we're mammals, and mammals have always needed to eat meat. Yeah, um, I don't know. Outside of the fact that I just love it, and I, th I think the pig is the most versatile of all the animals. That's my favorite animal to eat. I can do better dishes with pig than I can do with anything else. Okay, and would be uh, vegetarianism or uh, veganism something, would it be an option for you? Never, ever? No. If, Why would I need to? I mean, unless I had some kind of health thing where I had to. But I mean, I, I am all for the ethical treatment of animals, the ethical killing of animals. Is it kind of sounds like a paradox, but it's it's difficult because I mean, the people that, that have their beliefs of those ways of dietary lifestyle choices, that's their choice. They'll never understand mine. I respect theirs, but it's not for me. That's okay. Yeah, but I'm all about ethical treatment of animals, them have, living a happy life and then not being tortured, obviously. I'm, I'm not for that. I will not eat assembly line animals. Um, but yeah, I've tried, a, I've, I tried a vegetarian thing just because just I wanted to see how I felt. I think I got through the end of the day and I was pretty unhappy. So you need meat to be happy? Maybe. Maybe it's psychological, I don't know. Do you eat it But, every day? Yeah. I think, I think all meat eaters eat meat every day. Yeah, but some of them try to uh, slow down, not to eat every day. Yeah, I but think I, this is a good option. I am, I am a healthy eater, though, so this is like a... On tour, I eat healthy, because for the shows, to be good, it's all about taking care of ourselves. Like, you know, I would love to have a beer with this, but we have a show I can't drink before. Yeah. I can't eat three hours before I sing, can't eat three hours before going to bed, because it's all about taking care of my voice in the absolute best way possible. Where did you learn this? Well, have you years ever done? Of, years, years of touring. I've had maybe 10 lessons in my life total, but it's all through trial and error of learning what I can and can't and should and shouldn't do. Um, what about the other bands? Is there something vegan or vegetarian on their riders? Other bands on this tour? Yeah, or? Um, no one on this tour, but we've, we've done plenty of tours with our, there are a lot of bands that are vegan, straight edge and all stuff, and that, that's totally cool. I, I always respect another's lifestyle's choices, but. For me, I, I feel moderation is key. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm not eating like half a cow every single day. <laughs> But I mean, with the the style, the lifestyle that I live of 
playing 90 minute shows, doing yoga for 90 minutes, typically three to five times a, a day, and then working out of the gym three to six times a day, or three to six times a week, sorry, a week. I feel like I need the, you need to balance that different kind of protein sources for your body for repair. You can't just rely on soy, you can't just rely on hemp proteins or sprouted proteins, you need animal protein as well. And it's something too, like the Japanese culture, there is no vegetarianism, there is no veganism in Japan. Most places in the world there isn't that because these animals around, you have to utilize what you have. I guess if they didn't eat all these animals, they'd just be overrun by animals, wouldn't they? Perhaps. Mm -hmm. But that, that's when it gets tricky for the people that do believe in and do the ethics. I respect their choices, and for me, I'm a meat eater that loves offal, the organs, the non-used parts. So that way, if an animal's got to go, I figure human beings should utilize every single part yeah. of the animal versus throwing away half the body. But I think everything, even the bones should be used. Everything should be used to make something. Nice opinion. Mm. So let's quit the uh, meal topic and talk about Mitch Lucker. He's dead. Did you have any relationship to him or? I've, I've, I met him on a tour we did together. He's a super nice guy, super sweet man. He also had a squishy nosed dog just like I have. I have a French Bulldog, he had a Boston Terrier. So I'd always play with his dogs. He had his dog out on the tour and it just reminded me of my dog. Very sweet guy and it was, I was playing the Acoustic 2112 show, I guess when it happened. So I walked off stage after a great show and then I found out by text that Mitch had just passed away and I was very upset. He's such a young guy. He had such a yeah. huge career in front of him. As old as you are, what? And he was, I think, he maybe two years older. Yeah, okay. you're 26? 26. So it's really terrible, you know, and I, I, I feel awful for the family. I can't imagine how his bandmates and his loved ones feel, his daughter. So my heart goes out to everyone involved with his family and his friends because I, it just shows once again how short life is yeah so unfortunately I, I wish that didn't happen do you think they go on it's it's the band's decision you know, I think whatever way is the best way to pay tribute to his memory and he was he was an iconic figure in what he did and he was just such a sweet guy like I unfortunately wasn't able to call myself an acquaintance of his but when we toured together it was always all smiles when we saw each other and all hugs and I A, a dude that has a fellow squishy-nosed dog is someone that I consider <laughs> a fellow dog soulmate of mine. So it was it was very sad to see him go. So rest in peace. Yeah. Even when you cannot see. So the U.S. Uh, presidential election took place. You couldn't vote, could you? Oh, I voted. Absentee vote. By mail or? Mm -hmm. I was I was sure to vote. You were voting Barack Obama or? The big thing with voting in the U.S is that so many people don't vote. I don't know what the situation in Germany is, but I know the situation in the UK, there's even less voters in America. One of the main outlooks I always hear from young kids is, what's my one vote gonna matter? Well, when 500,000 to a million plus people have that same attitude of, oh, my one vote doesn't count, then that's a million votes lost. That's the same in Germany. Exactly, so people really need to rally up because The people that are going to complain and bitch about policies or bitch about who's elected or who's doing what that didn't state their opinion, that didn't vote, that didn't make an effort to make something happen, then they're going to lose out. The main thing with our country, regardless of who was coming into office next, the big thing for our current president, how do you clean up eight years of the past presidents? No. I'm not talking about Barack, I'm talking about Bush's campaign. How do you clean up eight years of that? Eight years of the deficit and eight years of this war and all this thing that happened, how do you clean that up in four years? So the main thing people need to do is stop attaching themselves to a party. I think that's what's very difficult about America. And it actually kind of addressed one of our uh, questions you had earlier. People love to call themselves something. Yeah. I'm a vegan, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a this, I'm a that. People are so obsessed with titles that the class system of the human beings have kind of made people just want to immediately attach themselves to this without ever looking further past into a person. So when the two parties are running, they don't really see what is this guy saying? What's this guy going to do for me in my economic situation? All they see is, oh, that's what I am. I am one of those, so I need to go with them. Almost kind of creating this class system to be as if it were a race, something yeah. that you could call yourself. So for me, I mean, today's a good day. Okay. okay. 
do you feel uh, do you feel American or do you feel Japanese or that, that's a hard thing and you know I wonder that for everyone that's mixed because our country America was founded on people escaping the tyranny of yeah. monotony and I feel that sometimes I'm not saying the whole country I'm saying maybe our country is divided in thirds a third of it is very you need to believe what I believe or get out a third has no opinion and a third is progressive and acceptant of all walks of life I consider myself acceptant of I'm not a religious person, I'm not a political person, but I'm acceptant of all views. Even if you have a completely opposite view of mine, if you can have a rational conversation with me and help me understand where you're coming from, I can help you understand where I'm coming from, then I'm all for it. A big thing with our band is acceptance of all. Not tolerance, but acceptance of all, unless it's hurting something else. And yeah, I think the, the people have spoken, and of course, you know, half of the country is unhappy and half the country is happy. I, I guess, I don't know. I don't know, but... Yeah. So do I feel American? I guess the idea of, of being an American is being mixed and coming from multiple backgrounds. Yeah. Me being half Japanese, quarter Irish, quarter German, and never really spending my time in my own home country. I'm always in someone else's home country. I, I feel like I'm just a person, just a human being. I don't mean to sound like all existential there, but that kind of relates to the, do I feel this as if this kind of person or that kind of person, this kind of political structure, this kind of religious person. I just feel like I'm just a dude floating around. I'm a nomad. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a nice opinion. Yeah. Not everybody has a this nomad, and I get to share the same home country as everyone else in the world. So my last question is: mm -hmm. um, a picture was uh, released where you're on playing the new demos for your uh, upcoming album. <laughs> Have you something to say about this? Any information? Any date? Any song title? Any title of the album? Uh, I can tell you we do have a title, we do have song titles, we do have 20 to 25 songs demoed, do have a producer, do have a location, do have an artist, everything's set up, all the visuals, everything, but it's all secret. Okay. Hopefully it comes out third quarter of next year, recording in January, January, February, March in Austin, Texas, that's all I can say of that. Um, it's going to be great, it's going to be really, really great. It, it's too difficult to describe in metal adjectives like heavy, brutal, melodic, all this stuff, like every band does. Also the classic, the classic phrase, our best album ever. Yeah. <laughs> I could say that within Waves, it was finally an album that all the fans of the previous four, because we had very divided fans, I just like Ember, I just like Crusade, I just like Ascendancy, I just like Shogun, everyone could agree on in Waves. And simultaneously, everywhere in the world, we've seen Waves the biggest reaction. Say the next record, so people can expect the best parts of everything we've ever done across all five records okay. on one. Sounds exciting. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yep. So thank you, Matt. Thank you. Enjoy your meal. We're looking forward to the show. Thank you.